This video lecture is on perception. We are still in unit one on the sensation perception portion. This is particularly focused on module 2.1b. And this is all about perception. How do we um, interpret information that we get into our brain? So we've talked so far about sensation. How do we get information from the outside world into our brain? And this is all about perception. What happens in our brain to help us process and interpret those sensations in order to see and understand the world around us? So to begin with, when we are looking at visual stimuli, when we look at any stimuli around us, we always tend to um, pick out figures and against like the ground. And so this this concept is called figure ground, that what we tend to look at and focus on becomes the figure and everything else becomes the ground. So if you look here, you might be focusing in on these chess pieces and the black area becomes the ground. So the chess pieces are the figure, the black area becomes the ground. Or these black figures, which are actually outlines of people, might become the figure. And when that becomes the figure, this white area becomes the ground. So anytime we look at something, we pick out what we it is what it is that we focus on what we focus on becomes the figure and everything else becomes the ground and this kind of ties back to that idea of selective attention and um, visually with selective attention we can't focus on two things at the same time we can't see two things at the same time rather we focus on one and the other pieces become the ground and then we can switch and the other the background can then become the figure and everything else it can become the background we also tend to appreciate and try to do as much visual organization as we can in the world around us so when we look around we rely on these gestalt principles which is um, gestalt principles are how we turn parts or pieces into holes how we like to see um, things that are organized and make sense when we perceive our world so let me give you some examples of the gestalt principles we have so one of the gestalt principles is closure so when we're looking over at this picture we using perception using our brain we fill in the holes for where there are pieces that are missing we like to see this as a whole circle rather than four individual parts we like to see this as a i think it's a wolf or a cat we like to see that as one whole image rather than multiple little lines and so we rely on this gestalt principle of closure that we're able to see the whole instead of just the parts and so we as humans naturally do this when we are interpreting our environment as we are filling in the holes filling in the gaps to see holes instead of parts this is one of the reasons why you can look up in the clouds and sometimes you know see a face you are able to look in there and you're able to fill in for the spots that are missing to make it look like a hole or when people say that they see like elvis presley in their sweat stain well, it's not a full picture of Elvis Presley, rather there's spots that are missing and we tend to fill in those spots that are missing to see a whole picture of a face rather than individual spots. Another gestalt principle we see is um, similarity. So when we're looking at items, we tend to see things um, in groups. So when we look over here at this picture, we tend to see this and this as a piece and then this, this, this and this as a piece we like to organize things by similarity so these four are together these are together these are together so we tend to group things by similarity um, so we like to look at you know if we have multiple beads that are laying out we like to separate it and see it um, by similar pieces um, or where things that are alike we tend to see as one group Another just thought principle is connectedness. Again, this goes back to the idea of wanting to see a whole in the parts. So rather than seeing a square, a line, and a circle, we see this as one whole piece. Um, when you look at a chair, we don't see two arms, a back, and a bottom, and legs. We put all those pieces together to see a whole. We see an entire chair. Um, when you look at a person, you don't see a circle head, a body, and arms and legs you put all of those pieces together to see that thing as a whole piece so we tend to 
connect things together to make them whole, to make them one piece, to see things that are connected. Another thing that we do is we like to organize our world by proximity. We look at things that are um, together in a certain section as being a group. So we see this as two groups of people because by proximity, these are close to one another. They must be a group. These are close to one another. These must be a group. Um, same thing as if you walk into our classroom, we will look by proximity and that's how we will, how we organize a classroom. And so we see that there are six groups in the classroom because there's six different tables. And we assume each of those table groups are one group together because of where they're located to each other. They're in the same proximity in the same section, they're a whole. Then there's a space, there's more chairs, that's another whole. The last one is continuity. And continuity is when intersecting lines look continuous or inter when intersecting lines um, are seen as continuous. So, for example, if you see here in the Olympic sign, we see how these two lines are intersecting. We don't see it as one, two, three, four broken lines. We rather see this intersecting line as one, two continuous lines. So same thing down here, when we see that this goes through here, we see this as a continuous line. Even though these two are intersecting, we don't see it as four broken ones. We see it as two continuous lines. Next thing I wanna talk about is monocular cues. So how do we perceive depth and motion um, using just one of our eyes. So there's monocular cues and binocular cues. So monocular cues are things that take one eye to perceive and understand, and binocular cues are things that take two eyes to perceive and understand. So a monocular cue, something that only takes one eye to help you with the depth, is something called linear perspective. And so when we are looking at things, at pictures, or we're looking in our world, we look in the distance and we're able to see that when lines get closer to one another, that indicates that those lines are farther apart. And when the lines get farther apart, we assume that it's closer to where we're located. And so as you can see here, this is an optical illusion where we are seeing this line as longer than this line, when in reality, they're both the exact same line, but because our eyes are taking in these angled lines and then our brain is perceiving these lines that are closer together as being farther away and these lines that are closer together as being farther apart we are our brain is being tricked because we assume that because this is farther apart that this is closer therefore this should be bigger than something that is far away when in reality these are both the same exact length, it just looks different because of that linear perspective is tricking us. We also need one eye um, for something called interposition for us to be able to, again, measure depth and distance. So interposition is the idea that when we see something on top of another thing, we interpret that or our brain interprets that as that item is closer to us. So in this picture, we interpret because this eight ball is on top of this blue ball back here, we interpret that this ball is closer than these balls. Because this blue dot is on top of this red dot, we see this as the blue dot is closer to us. And so that only takes one eye to be able to measure that distance um, by just seeing what is on top of what to give us that that depth or that view of what's farther and what's closer together. Other things that take one eye to be able to understand is um, the perceptual constancy of size and shape. So even though our retina takes in this apple as larger than this head, our brain is able to perceive that this apple is not larger than this head, that this apple has the same size here as it does back here on the tree. And our understanding is just that that apple is closer to um, the camera. And so we are able to, again, use our brain, use our previous experience, use our perception to recognize and understand that this apple has not actually changed shape. 
it's just where it's located in comparison to the camera. We also can do that same thing for shape. We know, again, just because this door casts a different image on our retina doesn't mean that that door has all of a sudden changed shape. We know that that door is still the exact same shape regardless of the angle that our retina or our eye takes that in at. Um, we know that that door is still this shape regardless of if it comes in on our, in our eyes this way. We use our previous experience, we use our brain to be able to perceive that accurately. Um, we also only need one eye for something called color constancy, um, that we are able to look at these two pictures and know that this blue is the same color as this blue, and this pink is the same color as this pink, and this green is the same color as this green. We are able to um, use our brain to perceive that these colors are the same, it's just the, um, the overlay color, or it's turned into black and white, or it has a different filter on it that's making it look like it's a different color. But because of our previous experience, we know that that color hasn't actually changed, regardless of whether or not that color has changed on our retina. Same thing up here, we know that this is just in a shadow, that these colors remain the same as these colors. It's just a shadow that's causing them to look darker. Again, when it goes into our eye, when it's in the sensation part, when it, our eye is taking that visual stimuli in, it is taking it in as darker and lighter. But then our brain processes that and looks at the cues about the fact that it looks like it's in the shade and our brain is able to perceive that as the same color. Another thing that our eyes are able to do is um, to experience what's called the pi phenomenon. It's easier if I show it to you. So take a look at this clip. So what does it look like to you? I'm assuming it looks like moving dots very, very, very quickly. Kind of like when you see running Christmas lights when you go look at Christmas displays. Um, but what the Pi phenomenon is, is the um, illusion of movement through just stationary lighting of um, different dots. So what is actually happening is that, as you can see when we just paused it, this goes out. Play it again. Then this one goes out, and all it is is it's successive lights that are going out to give the illusion of movement. So that's the same thing with running Christmas lights. What happens is all those light bulbs just take turns going in and out, in and out, which gives the illusion of movement. Um, or when you are um, trying to merge into a lane on a highway and you see those arrows that look like they are like the moving arrows, all it is is stationary individual lights that give us the perception of movement. All right, so those are things that only take one eye to perceive and understand. What are things that take both of our eyes for our brain to be able to perceive? So what takes binocular cues or two eyes? Well, what are the depth and distance cues that, that are necessary to have both eyes to do? One of those is retinal disparity. So this picture does a really nice job. If you want to take a chance right now and take your index finger and put it straight out in front of you, and I want you to close one eye and see where that finger is in comparison to something in the background. Then I want you to switch and close the other eye. Did you see the finger move? Did it look like it jumped? I would hope that it does, similar to here. When just the right eye is open, the thumb looks like it's here. When the left eye is the only one it opens, it seems like the finger moves and covers up that house. So what happens is our eyes take in two slightly different images um, and what our brain has to do is our brain has to take the image from the right eye, take the image from the left eye, and they have to identify the disparity or the difference between them or that space in between your two eyes, the space that your nose takes up. And what our brain does is it overlays those two images to allow us to be able to see one picture instead of constantly seeing the world, um, off as we do when we close one eye and then switch to the other eye. Um, so what happens in 3D movies is that they use two different camera angles and then they're able to 
um, have you wear those glasses that only give you um, one camera view from one eye and another camera view from another eye that makes it look like it's 3D. So it makes it look like it's coming out at you because of the camera angles that they're manipulating to get your eyes um, to perceive. A second binocular cue um, that helps to measure depth is called convergence. And in this very funny picture here, you can see the eyes of the cat are very, very close to being cross-eyed. So again, I want you to take your index finger and I want you to put it all the way out in front of you. And I want you to slowly move it towards your nose. And as you move it towards your nose, the closer you get to your nose, the more inward strain your eyes are doing and it's probably starting to hurt. The slower you go, the more it hurts because the strain on your eyes is so strong. Well, our brain uses that inward strain in order to measure how far or close together something is. So they're able to, so our brain is able to perceive the more the inward strain, the closer that object is. The further the eyes are out, the farther away said object is. So convergence is something we have to have but not, we have to have both eyes to be able to do because with just one eye and you do that same task, you're not going to feel quite the pain of the inward strain because we need both eyes to feel that inward strain for us to be able to um, use that information. That is it for this video lecture. We will see you in class.